All right. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Monday, December 19th, uh, 2022 Board of Commissioners meeting. This will be our last meeting for this year. Um, at this time, uh, I'd like to ask Commissioner Owen Etheridge if he would uh, do our invocation and Pledge of Allegiance for us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight as commissioners of Currituck County. We want to conduct the business of this county in a method that you would approve of, and we ask for your guidance in doing so. Father, as we enter this week of Christmas celebration, the birth of the Christ child, it is a time of celebration, but there's many among us who have lost loved ones recently, and we ask you to bless those families that are without members of their family that have gone on. We ask your special blessings on the family of Will Crotick. May, they, may you shroud that family with your grace, your mercy, and your love and comfort and help them in the coming times. Father, as we go forth this week, keep us safe and bring us all back together again when we meet again. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. 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 I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Owen. And just so everyone's aware, uh, anyone may come up and deliver uh, the invocation and Pledge of Allegiance. So we did not have anyone sign up tonight. In the future, if there's anyone out there in the TV audience that uh, would like to come up here and do that, we welcome you to that um, anytime. Uh, next is our uh, item B, is our Ethics and Awareness of Conflicts of Interest Reminder and Statement. Mr. McCord's going to jump in on that for us tonight. I think I drew the straw to read this. Uh, the Ethics Awareness and Conflicts of Interest Reminder. Pursuant to GS 153A-44, the Commissioner has a duty to vote on matters coming before the Board, but may be excused from voting on issues involving the Commissioner's own financial interest, official conduct, or on matters on which the Commissioner is prohibited from voting under. GS 14-234-153A-340G or 160A-388. Uh, e two, in accordance with the chapter two, division three of the Currituck County Code of Ordinances, it is the duty of every commissioner to avoid both conflict of interest, both conflicts of interest and appearance of conflict. Does any commissioner have any known conflict of interest or appearance of conflict of interest respect to any matters coming before the board of commissioners in this meeting? If so, please identify the conflict or appearance of conflict. Hey, thank you, sir. Uh, I will point out that I have, uh, we have uh, Monterey Shores, uh, this public hearing tonight. I know the applicant, and uh, I've spoken with the applicant well prior to him actually submitting anything, which we are uh, fully within our purview to do. Many times we are contacted about these sorts of things. And we also, uh, I believe the entire board received an email today from uh, Barbara Marzetti, um, those, she brought forth her concerns, but those are things that we cannot consider because they're not in evidence before us this evening. So uh, for me, I just wanted to point that out. It may be contrived as a conflict of interest, but I don't believe so. so. Yeah, I, I think I've drove my patrol car. Yeah, right. I saw it, but I didn't read it neither as of yet. <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on. So we have the approval of the agenda. Do we have any changes this evening? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to amend the agenda to add a reappointment to the ABC board. Okay, I'll add that as item five under board appointments. Uh, we have a second for that. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you all. All right, next up is public comment. I do not have anyone signed up tonight. Um, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak tonight to public comment? All right, seeing none, I will close the public comment. And move on to our next agenda, agenda item, which is commission report. And um, start over to my right this evening, Commissioner Owen Etheridge. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Very short and sweet. Um, been getting a lot of calls and messages about the dump stickers for the convenience sites, and people are asking where they haven't gotten one. I told them just keep the one they've got until they get a new one. That should suffice. 
That's correct. There, there, there will be mailed out uh, separate from the tax bills this year. There'll be a letter within contained with the decals explaining their purpose and how to use them. But yes, they, they should they should continue and with their current decals, which will be honored at the convenient sites. I was told to today by staff. I guess they're like it's like almost ready on the go. So it should be any day they should be sent out. I guess that's correct. Okay. Yeah. And also. Um, this is Christmas week, and we'll celebrate Christmas this coming Sunday, and just want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a safe Christmas and a Happy New Year. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Uh, I did forget to mention that Commissioner Beaumont is not present tonight. He is uh, away visiting family, so we hope he has a safe trip, and we'll see him back in January. With that, I'll go on to Mr. McCord. Um, first off, I'd like to uh, say Merry Christmas to everyone out there, all the uh, county residents, if anybody's watching at home or anybody's watching it later on YouTube. Merry Christmas to everybody. I hope everybody has a nice Christmas. I know times are tough and times are tight <laughs> for a lot of people. Um, that being said, I'd like to bring up Operation Santa, which we uh, participated in the sheriff, well, when I say the sheriff's office, the FOP. We had 48 people shop one night and 30 the night before where various officers take their time, their gas, their money, and go and shop for, um, for kids that are uh, underprivileged in the community. Um, it's a great event. I think we spent close to $30,000, uh, the FOP of money that we raised, as well as DSS spent. And I know I called Samantha Hurd, and I want to thank her for reopening. They took on like 50-some more kids. I believe we shopped for 138 and they spend roughly $250 per kid, so doing the math, um, you know, it's around 30 grand, the, the FOP, the monies that we raised. And, um, you know, there's a lot of kids that are going to wake up Christmas morning and they might have one toy, one outfit. You know, others are more blessed and privileged, so uh, it's a great program. If you own a business, if you just are Joe Citizen, you don't have kids and you want to donate, you can donate. The money's kind of all pooled together. Uh, we picked up kids this year for Toys for Tots that they did not have funds for or as, you know, or as many gifts. Um, so, like I said, it's a vetted process where they go through. So, you know, somebody's not getting Toys for Tots, DSS, and FOP. You know, they're not hitting it out of the park with all three or something. So, it's like I said, it's a good time. I mean, we got gathered together. Like I said, we had dispatchers. We had EMS staff, uh, other people, um, teachers, family members of law enforcement, their children, Great program. Um, like I said, I know DSS as well with Operation Santa. So if you can donate, please do. If, like I said, if you own a business, it's a tax write-off. Um, if you know you don't have any kids and you're, you can donate, donate. Um, I'd like to congratulate Jason Banks. Uh, he was my former supervisor at the sheriff's office. He did 30 years of service in Curry Tuck County. Not all in Curry Tuck County. Some was in Elizabeth City. Um, congratulate him. He was appointed to the school board. Um, being an elected official. You better have some thick skin. He's a former cop, so I think he's got it. So be prepared because you're going to get roasted on various social media sites. But, you know, it is what it is. So uh, I think he'll do a good job. And condolences to the um, Crotic family. I know we talked about that last time. Um, he's going to replace Will's seat. And, and I, I'd like to say this because there was a lot of negative on Facebook. And um, I, I would like to say this, that I was at Knott's Island standing between Will Crotick, and this is not a political ploy or anything, and Jason Banks, and Will looked at me and said, and, the, and they were talking, the three of us were having a conversation, and Will said, and I heard this on more than one occasion, he said that if he didn't win and Jason won, the county would win. So he, he supported Jason and thought Jason would be a viable candidate, as well as Will Crotick, there's nobody that worked harder than that man for, for, for the seat, and it's, it's a shame. But like I said, I think everybody needs to rally behind Jason. Um, I know Will supported him. He was good with him. So um, like I said, just I wish him luck. He's got a big heart. He cares. He's lived here his whole life. Um, he's had kids graduate from the schools. His wife worked for 32 years, I believe. So, um, And he did, I believe, 15 years of his uh, time with the sheriff's department of his was here in the county, and, and he had to supervise me, too, so that was probably a little bit extra work for somebody as well. It's <laughs> a lot of work. Yeah, a lot. But, no, like I said, so that's it. And just Merry Christmas, and like I said, be kind. And don't believe everything on social media sometimes. It's a little bit hateful, and like I said. 
Thank you, sir. Commissioner Jarvis. Um, thank you. Uh, I just want to start out by saying a huge congratulations to the COA nursing students, the faculty, the staff, and the administration. Uh, they had a 100% uh, first-time pass rate on the NCLEX exam, which stands for the National Council Licensure Examination. Um, and a total of 24 students in two different nursing programs had a first attempt 100% pass rate on this exam. And I am so proud of the work that COA is doing in this field. Um, they've just got a lot to be proud of. They've got a lot on the horizon that's gonna make this program even better. Um, students have to pass this exam uh, to receive their license to be employed as a registered nurse or a licensed practical nurse. Uh, and I'm going to quote uh, Dean Robin Harris. She's the dean, COA Dean of Health Sciences and the Wellness Programs, and she said it this way. The students and the faculty all work very hard to reach the goal of creating quality new nurses to care for our community, and the sooner we get them into practice, the better for all of us. So well done, excellent job. I'm proud to be affiliated with COA. And uh, I just want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Uh, 2020 has been a slow return to what feels like normal, I guess the new normal. And uh, I hope everyone takes the time to hang out with your loved ones, give them hugs that we deprived each other for so many years, take off that mask and give a big toothy grin. Uh, and let's hope 2023 is even closer to normal. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Kitty. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I too would like to wish everybody a Merry Christmas, our staff and the fellow citizens of Curry Tuck County. And I'd like to thank everyone who supported Operation Santa Claus. It really was a big success this year. And there are a lot of people out there that are hurting. I had the opportunity last week to attend the Master Gardeners Award Dinner with Senator Hannock. It was really nice to get back I don't think they've had the awards dinner in three years because of COVID. So it was nice to get back and people who worked so hard to see them get the recognition they deserve. Also, I attended the risk management uh, board of trustees meeting in Raleigh. And at that meeting, our director, Michael Kelly of, of 11 years service to the state of North Carolina, it was his last meeting. And, you know, a lot of times we don't, thank the people who are public servants. Uh, at the meeting, it was discussed about how hard it is to recruit people now in the public service because of the pay and everything else. So I do want to thank all of our county employees. It's been a, a great year. We appreciate everything that you do. I also serve on the ABC board and we appreciate their hard work. So many times they're People are having to work overtime where people have called out sick and everything. So when you see a county employee, thank them because it's a hard job that they're doing. And we do appreciate everything that you do for us. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Commissioner Payment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, let me just start off, first of all, just uh, wishing our chairman a belated birthday yesterday. So. <laughs> Um, you know, he's, he's, he's catching up to me fast, right, so, right. <laughs> so I'll slow down and let him catch up. I want a so bit. just a happy birthday there. And then uh, again, to my fellow board members, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, the staff, um, citizens out there. Um, you know, being a part of Currituck County is special, special people, and getting to work with special people and the staff here, it's, um, it's an honor, and, and I cherish that. And I just, again, just wish, remember the ones that you're, neighbors out there that maybe have lost someone, um, don't have family members, the service members overseas that are away from the families, keep them in your thoughts and prayers this holiday season. And um, and it's going to be a cold weekend too this Christmas, I think. The weather's going to be cold, so just be safe out there and, and make sure, um, you know, check on your elderly neighbors, make sure the heat's going, make sure they're okay because it's going to be cold. Um, <clears throat> And I was going to talk about, Chairman had mentioned too, I did talk to a couple of pastors um, over the course of a few months, and they were asking me, hey, can we get back up in front and start doing the leading the prayers? And I said, absolutely. I said, we want to get back in that rotation. Mm -hmm. I said, anybody out there, all you can do is call the clerk, 
clerk to the board's office at 232-2075. And um, she'd be glad to get you information, get you on the schedule. We love to have as many pastors represent come up here and, and, and help us uh, with the prayer. Um, so please, you know, get back involved, like Chairman said. Um, firefighters. Um, all the fire departments still need help. They need membership. Please support them. Um, this is a rough time of the season. Get ready to get started with fires and heating calls. So um, just remember them. Remember all your first responders out there. They're going to be out there this holiday season in this cold weather. Um, and lastly, um, I received, and some of the other commissioners might have as well, some emails and phone calls from our citizens, and we've always heard this, you know, how do we get, you know, how do we get more stores? How do we get a store in the south end of the county? How do we get drug stores? How do we get doctor's offices? Well, just so everybody knows, the county is not turning anybody away. If they want to come talk to the county, hmm. we are to having discussions with them where anything that, you know, any information they need, we welcome any business that wants to develop in here, but they have certain criteria. So what I can suggest, and I've suggested to some of the citizens out there is, you know, maybe get a, get a group of people, write emails, letters to different corporations, different businesses out there, and let them know what you're wanting. And um, it's not the county deterring them. The county doesn't bring in the dollar generals and the food. And everybody <laughs> thinks it's the county's. Why is the county bringing this? No, the county's not bringing it in. It's a business that wants the opportunity. And um, like everybody else, you have an opportunity for a business in the county. So you get involved. I mean, we'd love to see, you know, more types of businesses here. We're doing everything we can. So just wanted to throw that out there. And with that, I'm going to say thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thanks, sir. Mr. Chairman, when he mentioned the fire department, it did make me think of Santa Claus coming around the communities. <clears throat> That is something that you just, my house it, last night. it thrills me. We run out and look, Kids and we appreciate I even ran out the edge of my street yeah. when the other one's going to so play. That's something that, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, is really nice yeah. for the community, and we appreciate them doing that. I didn't walk that nice. far out. I'm not going to lie. I did pick out the one. Nice. It was Yeah, they came nice on my house. Like, I, I asked the chairman if I could add one thing. Mr. Um, Nelson's um, here on the front row from the Daily Advance. He wrote a really nice article a couple days ago that talked about Curry Tuck County and, as Miss Kitty said, with public servants and stuff like that. This board supports the county staff, I mean, really strongly. And his article kind of touched on that and showed the city of Elizabeth City is down 25 police officers out of, like, 60. So that's almost half. The bigger cities, Virginia, they're 200. We have one opening. And tomorrow I have a, a voice stress with the guy, and hopefully we'll fill that. And it just it's, shows that the county and this board, the county manager, supports our county employees, and it's a good place to work. It's a good place to live. We have crime just like everybody. But he, I wanted to recognize why he was sitting there, and I, I even wrote a note about it, but he wrote a nice article just showing how the public safety, not just law enforcement, but EMS and other stuff, you know, it's hard to get people to do those jobs. And we're very, very fortunate because it's supported by the board. It's supported by the, the, the county and everything and our citizens. And we're lucky that, you know, like I said, we have one spot, and I'm hoping that's going to be filled tomorrow. But compared to other places, like the town of Asheville, I think, was 41% down on their law enforcement, just the, the numbers. And like I said, we were we have one. So, I mean, it's, it just shows that, and I wanted to thank the board as well as thank him for the nice article. And it just shows that, you know, the community, not everybody, you're going to have haters. But they were, it's supported. So thank thank you to, to the board for all that and to his article. All right. Thanks, sir. All right. Lastly, uh, everybody seems to be thanking the staff for doing a good job, and um, i got to do that too. But uh, what people may or may not realize, we've got a new county attorney, a new county manager, a new assistant county manager, uh, and, and several other new people that have come on board. And uh, through all that, we've been able to maintain uh, an excellent level of service to our citizens here so um thank you to you guys for for all you do and megan getting up to speed as fast as you have uh, it's, it's awesome um uh we won't be meeting again uh the first meeting in january as far as our schedule goes we'll be back again at our at our second meeting uh in january and the board has a retreat scheduled for the third and fourth of february as of right now we'll probably put something out on that soon um we'll, we'll be talking about a myriad of topics uh 
and spending money is one of them, uh, probably the biggest one of that one. Um, I'd like to thank the members of, I serve on the Tourism Advisory Board and thank them uh, if they're listening tonight for their service. Uh, they come out after work, show up, uh, drive some of them from, from quite a distance away to, to come and, and put their two cents in on, on, on what we do here for the Tourism Advisory Board. And um, that's it for me this evening, so we'll move on. Uh, next up, we have the County Manager's Report. Uh, first of all, just to remind the board and, and the public that the county offices will close this Thursday at noon, uh, be followed by the uh, annual employee Christmas lunch, which I hope to see all you commissioners, except those who are out of town, uh, in attendance. Um, secondly, um, the, the county participated in phase one and two of what was entitled the North Carolina Resiliency Coastal Communities Program. There was a planning process which took place uh, for communities to evaluate uh, what types of projects uh, might be beneficial to the county in facing resiliency with climate change or other similar type of issues. In fact, our own, uh, own Commissioner Kitty Etheridge was on that committee which helped put together that list of, uh, of project ideas or programs that might be a benefit to the county. Uh, the county has recently been awarded $35,000 uh, toward the, the engineering and design of some of what the county put forward as uh, projects that might be of assistance in the county becoming more resilient. Over time, those two projects are number one for Baxter Lane, which is to improve uh, the ditch and upsizing of an existing culvert along Baxter Lane, and then Old Tolls Creek Road project, uh, which includes replacement of a culvert under Rocky Top Road and ditch improvements, which we just heard about a few moments ago before this meeting started. So. So again, this is for engineering and design money. Uh, the soil and, and water uh, technician Dylan Lloyd uh, last week uh, put forward from Albemarle Resource Conservation and Development Council another opportunity to seek grants for the actual construction uh, of those projects. And he asked that I bring that to your attention, and uh, which I'm assuming that you will be supportive, but he would like an expression of that support so that he can include that in his grant application. And so will you support an application to have a more resource conservation development council for funding of, uh, of our two projects? So moved. <laughs> all right, all in favor? Aye. All right, there you go. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you. Ms. Morgan. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The first round of depositions took place a couple of weeks ago for the 85 and Sunny versus Curry Tech County case. Multiple rounds will, will occur. Um, so I think the staff that were required to participate in those depositions did a very good job. Um, so that was, that was great. The opioid litigation is going well. We got a letter recently. Some big companies um, have settled. So more info on that later. We're moving forward on some code enforcement that's been going on for a while, people not complying. I am going to Kerala with the county engineer tomorrow to look at Section T of Ocean Sands. Um, if you recall, I think it was in the end of 2021, you, um, you had a resolution that approved condemning that part for a multi-use path. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna move forward with that. So we're gonna meet with a potential surveyor and just look at what we're dealing with and start the steps for that, as well as looking at the handicap ramp at Corolla Village Road and try to figure out how we can get that fixed and, and going. So um, that will take place tomorrow. So more info on that. That's all I have. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, next up uh, is our public hearings. Uh, item A, PB 87-56, Monterey Shores, Phase 10, Part A. Request for preliminary plat special use permit for six, lot, for six lots, five single family residential and one commercial at the proposed Corolla Boat Club, Monterey Shores, PUD Phase 10. The property is located on Malia Drive and Corolla Tax Map 16, Parcel 10 in the Poplar Beach Township. And with that, I think we need to swear everyone in that's going to be part of this. So y'all would come up and all right, we've 
Got everybody? All right. If everyone's got their left hand on a Bible, raise your right hand. You all solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Jesus. Thank you all. All right. Mr. Kemp, you're going to be presenting for the staff this evening? Yes, sir. And All right. Good evening, Chairman, Vice Chair, and members of the board. It's good to see you. I'll be presenting this item. As uh, you heard, it's an application for a preliminary plat special use permit for six lots in Monterey Shores. Uh, the applicant is calling it the Corolla Boat Club. Just to orient you to the site, it is located on the west side of Route 12, uh, across from Monterey Plaza and directly north from Timbuktu. As you can see from this aerial, the land is currently undeveloped. The site is zoned SFO, single family residential outer banks, uh, and it is part of the Monterey Shores planned unit development, uh, which means it is subject to an approved sketch plan, which you'll see in a moment. The site has two land use designations from Imagine Currituck Plan, uh, O2 Reserve Lands, and G3 Mixed Use Centers. Uh, I will note that all of the development except a boardwalk uh, occurs in the G3 Mixed Use Centers area. As I mentioned, uh, the development is subject to an approved plan. Here it's pictured. This is the approved sketch plan. Uh, which you approved on October 18th, 2021. I just wanted to point out some major uh, features of the site. It includes five residential single family lots, one commercial uh, lot with a restaurant and entertainment venue, 25 townhome lots. Uh, down on the bottom side of the lake, you can see three uh, structures which will be commercial on the ground floor with residential units above. Uh, and it has the Pond, which is used for stormwater. The county does have an easement over that pond, but it will also be used for uh, recreation. Uh, the plan does show two access points, one on the right of the plan from Malia Drive, uh, and one, a second one, through an NCDOT-owned uh, parcel, which we'll talk about more in a moment. This is a phasing drawing showing what's included in this phase. Uh, it's pictured there in yellow. And what is included is five single-family residential lots, which you can see uh, to the, on top of that road, and then one commercial lot. I want to talk to you uh, real briefly about the two access points, the one from Malia Road and the one from the NCDOT owned parcel. Here is a close-up of, uh, well, yeah, here's a close-up of the one over the pond. So this is a proposed roadway over the pond. And uh, it really has two components I'd like to talk about. The first component is to use this uh, portion of roadway, the second access. It has to traverse that vacant parcel you see, which is owned by the NCDOT. Uh, there is a condition with the approved sketch plan that reads, Proposed access and configuration through the NCDOT owned parcel shall be approved by NCDOT or Turnpike Authority as appropriate and by county staff through the preliminary plat special use permit or major site plan review process. So here we are at the preliminary plat process uh, and therefore the board may want to consider a condition that the approval of the connection by NCDOT uh, must be approved prior to the construction drawings related to this preliminary plat. Um, this would be important for consistency with the approved amended sketch plan and the development as the uh, applicant has proposed. I just want to note, you know, it's important because if we can't get, if approval from NCDOT can't come across that parcel, then you have this road traversing the pond, which would end at the property line and the whole site might need to be redesigned at that point. Um, the second uh, portion of the roadway, the actual road across the pond. Um, the board might want to consider a required timing of the actual construction of this road extension um, for consistency with the approved plan. Staff suggests that the roadway across the pond be installed prior to the final plat of the six six lots. Uh, 
why would we do that? If, they're, if they haven't, let, let's say they've got permission, right? They, they were, they're going to go through this whole process. and Why would they put that in before they go on to phase two of the project, which would be the other commercial side? Uh, staff is just looking for uh, some assurance that it would be done as it's an amenity that this access would be used to access the five lots and the commercial lot that's being platted. It would just be assurance that uh, it be done with this phase. As opposed to if they didn't do it, uh, they could just come in off of Sunset Boulevard, I guess, and that would be – they would have no way to traverse from one side of the property to the other if that, that didn't go in, right? Is that the – Correct. There's still the access point showing on the right of the plan from Sun, right. which uh, uses Malia. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the other improvement I'd like to talk briefly about is this boardwalk you see to the right of that uh, drawing. It's a boardwalk that goes out and provides access to the sound. Uh, as the boardwalk is an amenity that is proposed with this phase of the project, the board may also want to consider uh, require timing for the construction rather than posting of a performance guarantee. Uh, when TRC reviewed the project, it suggested construction of the boardwalk prior to the platting of all these lots. I did also want to talk, the boardwalk is shown uh, at the rear of the commercial parcel. It is connected to the residential parcels by a pathway along the rear mm -hmm. there, and that is because the uh, conservation area you see is set, uh, open space set aside. And so you cannot have individual access from those lots. They all go around the back and com uh, connect to one boardwalk. As I mentioned earlier, the site has both O2 and G3 land designations. Uh, the undeveloped portion of the site is O2 reserve lands. The O2 designation com is comprised of wetlands, environmentally sensitive areas, significant heritage areas, and prime agricultural land that should be targeted for conservation. The developed portion of the site is in the G3 Mixed Use Center. The D3 uh, designation is supported by major transportation networks, public water and wastewater infrastructure, and a community greenway system that links neighborhoods to mixed use areas. This sector provides for a wide range of uses, including mixed residential subdivisions with a variety of housing types and mixed use developments that maximize the efficient use of space. Appropriate land uses are medium to high density residential, commercial, and appropriate industrial uses. I won't read them all out, but listed on page 10 of your agenda are the uh, applicable policies from Imagine Currituck. They are land use goals 1, 1.3, 1 1.4, 1 and 2.1, transportation policy 2.1, environmental goals and policies 1 and 1.1, parks and recreation goals and policies 1, 1 1.5, 2.1, and 3.2, General Kerala land use policies 1.4 and 1.7, and finally Kerala G2, G3 transect policies 2.1 and 2.2. The Technical Review Committee reviewed this application and made the following comments. Uh, prior to construction, drawing approval, access through NCDOT parcel shall be approved by NCDOT or Turnpike Authority as appropriate. Number two, prior, prior to recording of the final plat, construction of the roadway crossing the pond must be complete. Three, prior to recordation of the final plat, construction of the boardwalk to the water must be complete. Four, proposed changes to the pond shall not negatively impact the county's easement. Five, walkways and piers for private property owner use may not be constructed in open space set-asides. And finally, number six, prior to the approval of the construction drawings, provide certification that Malia Drive meets NCDOT construction standards. So those are the six comments from the Technical Review Committee. So number six, there will seem to be about ten different back and forth uh, over Malia Drive. Did, who owns that road? Do you know? Je I'm going to defer to Jenny, who's worked with the project. Actually, I'm not sure who owns it. The applicant probably can speak to that. You own you, you own Malia Drive? Okay. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. All right. And with that, I will put up the uh, four special use permit review standards and stand by for any questions. Um, well, you answered who owns Malia Drive. Let's see here. Uh, um, one of the things that the public asked about um, was on-street parking. And it looks like they had put in some areas for on-street parking. We don't allow for on-street parking. Um, 
I believe that's in the UDA that we don't allow for. That's correct. Um, does it make sense to have a conversation about that if it's designed to have on-street parking, like we did in Foss, for instance? I mean, I get that's completely different. The PDM and it's gone now, but as a use. But um, if it's designed to have it, why? Couldn't it or shouldn't it, I guess? Um, well, couldn't because it's prohibited in the UDO, but that is a conversation we could have. Right. Um, I, mean, uh, I guess it, uh, my, I'm asking you, does it make sense for that to allow for on-street parking if it's designed for, you know, if they've designed for it, they've got water streets, they've got pullouts in there curbed, you know, f for that purpose. Right. It would seem that it could be accommodated. Right. Uh, yes. Uh, just interesting they brought it up because half the people in Crawl don't want you to park it anywhere. So, uh, <laughs> but we definitely, you know, living there and seeing the need for on-street parking, uh, especially temporarily where we have the service, whomever come through, whether it's the pool guy, the grass guy, the, you know, who, whoever those people are, the window cleaner, um, that kind of thing. So, it was just interesting that someone brought it up and um, that is Commissioner McCord. I was going when you were talking about the on-street. Is that uh, I know some of the. I believe some of the roads on the county ordinances in Monterey Shores are there in the where they can't park in there. Was that, I mean, like I said, that's what I was basically that's kind of what you said. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there, there may be, you know, and Monterey may have an internal. Uh, that, I think they think there's a, still private roads in Monterey. So. Yeah. Yep. All right. Um, Mr. Chairman, real quick, can you, can you back up again when you were the, the on street parking? Mm -hmm. And you said make accommodations. Well, we'd have to change the ordinance for it, I would assume, would be the proper protocol if we wanted to allow for on-street parking. In this case, they had actually drawn it into the sketches and Correct. combined it. Correct. So we'd right. have to approve some type of ordinance change. That yeah, that, that, that wouldn't happen tonight. But it's no, just, but, it's, uh, but they, they have a plan for it, and it, and it, and it may make sense. Uh, you know, as we've seen, rarely is there enough parking, you know, for the use of the homes. So if this gets approved, it would have to be approved with a change to, to remove on-street Parking until an ordinance change was made. Then would it be a, couldn't approve these drawings because no, they they, they they put them in there, but they're they they're blocking them off. So they're going to stripe them for non-parking, but they are included in their sketch plans. Uh, I think it's two. It looks like maybe or three. Right, there's two, uh, yeah. uh, maybe three. They, they but you can see them in the middle there. In their comments, they answered that. So, um, you know, right now they're going to be striped out. But okay. you know, right. if they come in. If they wanted to have those available, they could suggest an ordinance change possibly when they come in for a later phase and amend their sketch plan at that point to allow for on-street parking. Um, it's just just interesting that somebody brought that up. As much complaints as we get about on-street parking in Corolla, oh, and, that somebody and, and, said we need on-street parking. And if they're put there and you have stripes, the stripes ain't going to matter. They're going to park there. They're going to park there anyway, right? <laughs> and if well, they're not, if and if they're not the supposed to, I guarantee they'll get some more. Would that not bring up like? Wouldn't that? Would it be only for? certain subdivisions i mean to that's, me it might be creating more problems than it that's solves. not what we're tackling tonight no know, but i'm saying just to kind of keep right. it in mind that it might create more problems than right. it solves right. by doing that well, with this put, in mind you put design criteria for it right there would be a minimal street width and space that it would mm -hmm. have to okay. to be able to have it in. yeah and that, and most of the roads are already done in corolla so at that point it's okay. not going to happen, but moot point. Yeah, it's kind of exactly. a moot point. The, the ordinance does allow for on-street parking in the Craytex Station plan development. Right. That's the only area right. where it's allowed currently. Uh, had a couple other things. Um, the boardwalk. You mentioned that in your presentation. There seemed to be a lot of back and forth about when that should get built. Should it be bonded? Uh, camera permits. Um, did you guys ever get? A satisfactory <laughs> answer, or, or is is the applicant okay with building it prior to final plan approval? Can they do it? The applicant and and he can speak to to the the process, the permitting process, and the challenges with building that walkway and the other uses that that are proposed to use that walkway mm -hmm. at a later date. And there's some challenges with width and things like that. But the applicant proposed that this development would have access to the water for the folks in the development. Right. So that's why you saw all that back and forth because staff felt to be consistent with the plan that the walkway needs to go in. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean you can ask the applicant if they're okay. comfortable I just with that. 
see if you guys got any resolution as it's um, you know you wanted it as a as a condition they have to be able to meet that condition right right um i think i think that's it for me all right uh, any other board members have any questions for mr kemp uh, you asked one or two of the ones i was thinking of. about the boardwalk do you have a time that do you want it put in prior to final plat approval uh, yes, uh, the TRC recommended condition had it being installed prior to final platting of those six lots. Okay. okay, well, I guess we'll talk to them and find out where they're at with that process. So, if there's nothing else, uh, we'll move on. All right, thank you, Chairman. Thank you, sir. All right, next up, I'll invite the uh, applicant up this evening and the representative to uh, lay it out for us. Good evening, commissioners. My name is John Morrison. I'm an attorney with the Twyford Law Firm. We have office here in Moyock and Elizabeth City as well. On a personal matter, I'd like to thank you for extending, um, on my behalf, a continuance of this meeting from the last scheduled time. They had a, a medical emergency in my family, and I appreciate that, as do my clients. Uh, now, as we go forward, this is all one big process, and we were here back in March, and one, one of the testimonies that was offered was from Mr. Stephen Craddock, who is an appraiser, and he gave testimony to the effect that uh, this plan would not diminish adjacent property values, etc., and was consistent with the land use plan and harmony of the neighborhood and those kind of things. I would ask you, he is, uh, us, fortunately for him, he is on vacation in Hawaii. <laughs> That's right. That's what you're going on. No same person would require him to be here. Uh, but I believe that is already in evidence and you can consider. If not, I personally contacted him today about proposed changes you were here. And he said uh, his testimony would remain unchanged. If that becomes a key point, we can get an affidavit to submit uh, at a later later time, very near time. But I believe you've already heard it. Mr. Well, you got somebody sneaking up on you there. Okay. All right. Can you hear me now? Oh, yeah. Did you hear anything I said before? Yes, we did. Okay, good. Well, you don't want to hear it again. All right. Uh, so I will begin our presentation. Uh, we want to thank staff. They've thought it through carefully. We have some disagreements, but I don't believe anything involves a violation of the UDO. The first witness I would like to call is the project engineer, Mr. Mark Bissell. You has also previously accepted him as an expert in engineering and design, and I assume that will continue. Uh, is that the case, or do we have to requalify them? You can ex go ahead and accept him as an expert witness. Yep. There you All go. right, do that. thank you. All right, Mr. Bissell. <clears throat> Mr. Bissell, uh, you've been sworn. Uh, where did your relationship to this project? Uh, I am the uh, engineer of record for this project. And how long have you worked on it? Well, we've been working on it for at least a couple of years. All right. Pro probably a little longer. And are you familiar with the Curtis County Unified Development Ordinance? I am. How many times have you read it or had to make reference to it? Best guess. <clears throat> well, this. Uh, particular ordinance I think was adopted in 2013 and I've probably read it most almost daily since that time. Okay. <laughs> All right. You agree with that. Now, you heard the county staff's presentation. If you would, uh, let's start off on one of the big issues first. That is the necessity of getting the approval of either the Turnpike Authority or the North Carolina Department of Transportation uh, to use the right of way. <clears throat> right. Right. Yeah. Now, now what, what would be the purpose of the right of way? Well, the purpose of the right of way would be to provide connectivity and provide access to some future commercial development interconnectivity. Uh, interconnectivity. Okay. All right. Now, as the project now stands, uh, is there an adjacent community or development or 
Is there anything to be served by Anakin Activity right now? Well, right now the the seafood market is there on the DOT right of way, which is a, a temporary use. Okay. And, and the seafood market. It's a, a month to month lease, I understand. It's a month to month lease, and it's not a permanent arrangement. Right. Correct. correct. That's correct. And as far as you know, there is no plan to make that permanent. No. All right. And there's no plan for development that would be served by Anakin Activity. Correct. All right. Now, as a right of way, uh, that is a right of way to the public, correct? Yes. Um, and it was purchased with uh, state funds for public right of ways. It was. Okay. So, although we cannot get, and this is important, Commissioners, what we would need from the NCDOT or the Turnpike Authority is the permission to build driveway access and what else? and uh, roadway improvements through okay. the, the, All right. the site. Uh, but in terms of the ability to travel back and forth across that mm -hmm. right away, that exists right now. That does. Okay. It was, it was recorded as in both the deed and on the, the map as a, as a right of way. Okay. All right. Now, uh, here's our problem. Have you been in touch with NCDFT and the Turnpike Authority regarding this I have on several occasions. And what is their response been to you? That uh, they are unable to approve any permanent use of that right of way until all of the litigation has been settled for the new uh, Mid County Bridge, Mid Currituck Bridge. All right, and there's currently litigation existing over where the bridge will go, and it's uncertain. And their environmental concerns and things like that, the issue. It's my understanding it's uh, under appeal right now. Okay. All right. Uh, but they did not turn you down, if I'm correct in understanding. They just said no, they they address just, it now. That, that's correct. All right. So as we stand here tonight, it is impossible for you to get permission or to get denial. So it would appear. Okay. All right. Now. Uh, Let me just say that you know one of the the reasons that we uh, agreed to that condition at the amended sketch plan stage is this project is always envisioned to be a phased development. We didn't envision that that access would necessarily be required in order to do the first phase. All right, are we in the first phase? Now? We're in the first phase. All right, in order to complete the first phase, do you need access to that project? We do not, and, and, and in fact, um, because of this issue, when we had the traffic impact analysis, and we contracted to have that work done by the firm VHB, uh, we asked them to evaluate uh, the traffic both with and without that connection. All right. Uh, but yeah, you would, uh, is the applicant Mr. Morrison, at such time as this litigation gets settled, to petition DOT and the Turnpike Authority for the driveway and road approval. Absolutely. Okay. And how long will that process take? Um, well, it could probably be done in a couple of months once uh, they have indicated a willingness to accept the application. Let me, let me pause you for just a second, uh, Commissioner Payment. Well, you right. might have been asked, you may have been answering the question, but I was going to get into with the litigation with the bridge. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't go favorable and the state says, forget, forget it now, we're not going to be able to, to allow that, what's going to happen with the project then? You might have been going into this as a. <laughs> preparation, I thought if I was in your seat, I'd ask that question too, because litigation is uncertain. So. Uh, if you could not access, uh, and really what we're talking about is not access to the road, but mm -hmm. the driveway mm -hmm. and the improvements to the open space there. If you couldn't get that from DOT because the litigation went the other way, what is plan B? Well, the traffic impact analysis report indicates that the development that we're proposing can be adequately served without that connection just by uh, Malia Drive. It has, a, and I'll let, uh, ask uh, at the appropriate time, Andrew Topp, who is the traffic engineer who prepared that report to elaborate on that. Okay. Uh, now, in your 
capacity as a project engineer, this, if for whatever reason, that just stopped. We couldn't get the approval for the driveway and improve the road. Does that in any way impact the safety of the project? It does not. Why? Because the uh, level of service is adequate and the traffic can be accommodated adequately through the Malaya Drive connection. All right. Uh, that would be fine. Thank you. And I believe uh, you would want to address some other matters, and I will let you do that uh, without further interference from the attorney. Some of this uh, presentation is is repetitive from what Mr. Kemp talked about. I will kind of go quickly through that. This is, as he indicated, the approved sketch plan that was approved back in March. And uh, you see the uh, it includes, in addition to what we're proposing tonight, uh, 25 townhomes, three mixed-use commercial buildings, um, a boat basin with docks and a paddle boat rental facility. And that is in this location here. <clears throat> the development that is proposed tonight uh, includes, again, these first five single family lots, one commercial lot, and then the associated infrastructure, which is the roadway utilities and drainage improvements that go with that. Again, future phases uh, would be, and, and, and again, if the DOT connection is not made through that right of way, uh, we would need an alternate way to get to the paddle boat rental facility and to the mixed use development, the three commercial buildings that are shown on the south end of the pond here. So we're not proposing those, that part of the development. Um, without a DOT approval to use that right of way. So just to go through briefly the four special use permit criteria, uh, the TI, the project will not endanger the public health or safety because the um, TIA report indicates that Malia Drive will be able to accommodate the traffic safely uh, the pedestrian connections will be made to enhance uh, connectivity. Emergency vehicle uh, access is accommodated properly. Uh, fire protection and water supply needs are addressed. The uh, existing pond has been modeled uh, to accommodate not only the, the, the runoff from this development, but from Whalehead and from the shopping center and from the um, wastewater system that's pumping groundwater in there. Uh, that has all been modeled and accommodated in that pond. Um, it'll also enhance water quality and wastewater treatment is being provided by Carolina Water Service, which has capacity in the adjacent treatment plant. Uh, it will not in injure the value of adjoining or budding lands. Um, the adjacent uses to the south and east are commercial. Um, the nearby property to the northeast is the wastewater plant and multifamily development, which is adjacent to our proposed multifamily. Uh, to the north and northwest is open space, and we're providing open space there as well. Uh, the property has been part of Monterey Shores since 1988, uh, and it joins the commercial part of, Buck, uh, of Timbuktu, which is Buck Island. Uh, as Mr. Kemp uh, mentioned, the sketch plan was approved, uh, amended in March to provide for this use. Um, we're surrounded on three sides by full service development. Uh, it's compatible uh, with commercial and mixed use in the area. As he indicated, it is now uh, classified as G3, which is mixed, a mixed-use center in the Imagine Curatug plan. And so, and there was a, a whole list of ways that it is um, 
compatible and compliant with the uh, <coughs> consistent with the land use plan. I'm just going to go over two here, and that is uh, 2.1, which is to concentrate commercial development of existing neighborhood nodes to minimize commercial strip development and maximize the moving capability of NC12. So this actually is an expansion of an existing commercial node. And 2.2, to encourage existing PUDs to continue to develop according to the master plan to achieve a more efficient use of land, higher level of amenities, and creative design. And this is in accordance with the amended sketch plan that was approved in March. Uh, will not exceed the county's ability to provide adequate public facilities. We're anticipating no impacts on school whatsoever. Uh, pedestrian connectivity, uh, no in impacts are anticipated to fire and rescue law enforcement, and the existing utilities have the capacity to serve the site. The county water system has provided a uh, capacity letter, as has the uh, privately owned public wastewater facility. Uh, regarding the connection to DOT, um, the uh, traffic analysis again has been provided that demonstrates that the traffic can be properly handled with this connection through uh, Malia Drive. Uh, the special use condition, permit condition number six, I think is the one that um, is, is of concern, and we believe that that condition can be met with the future phase that requires this connection, as the current phase does not need it. <clears throat> so there are a couple of recommendations in the staff report that we would like to discuss and request a modification to. The first is that is the recommendation that NCDOT approve the connection through the right of way before construction drawing approval. Uh, we don't believe it's possible to do that at this stage. As they as I indicated, they can't approve a permanent use of the right of way until the litigation over the current bridge is settled. So we would propose instead that the configuration be approved as soon as practicable after DOT settles the pending litigation and prior to the start of construction of that part of the development that relies on it for access. And those parts that rely on it for access are the paddle boat rentals and the mixed use buildings behind Timbuk2. And related to the recommendation that the roadway connection across the pond be constructed to the NCDOT property prior to recording the first phase of a uh, final plat, uh, we don't object to constructing the roadway. And the problem is we can't finish that connection without improving the DOT right away itself because there's a great difference between the roadway that's going to be coming across the pond and we can't just stop it at the DOT property line without putting fill. In. You don't want somebody driving off of there? I mean, it'd be kind of, you know, the weekly event. It'd definitely make Facebook. So, you know, we'd propose that, you know, the portion of the road that can be constructed without a DOT encroachment agreement be constructed as part of this phase of the development. and the rest of it after the lawsuit has been settled. Mr. Bissell, what phase, uh, you used the words um, that would rely on that access. What phase, is that phase three that would rely on that? Um, Sunset Road, NCD, non-NCDOT? Non I think we could call it phase three. Phase three. <clears throat> It may be phase four because the, uh, I think we're probably going to consider the, the boat base in the phase by itself. Yes, sir. So can I ask a, I got a kind of a legal question I want to ask our county attorney. I know uh, Mr. Morrison stated earlier that um, the expert witness, witness Stephen Craddock could not be here tonight. And there's been some proposed changes, whether they're minor or not. 
and the statement was made that he would he would still say the same thing. Is that considered hearsay, or do we need him before us to make that statement, or can we get that statement from the attorney and 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 hold that as a true statement for him when he's not here? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so you can take judicial notice mm -hmm. of the testimony that he gave at the prior hearing um, because you can technically go back and look at the video and, and see that it's accurate. Um, so, previous um, yes. So now we're going to be presenting some minor changes, and he's not here to comment on those. Right, so you just have to take, you can take okay. judicial, judicial notice of his prior testimony but anything after that but the and the you're not suggesting to change the layout at this time just phase in when certain parts of it are enacted so right We're the, only the, the, about the time. what you're presenting was what you presented before in this current phase you would not want to build basically the bridge to nowhere right. at this point until there's a reason to build that bridge right exactly Is that, and then that you come before us again with then come before us at that point, I would say, yeah, you're so we could hear. I mean, so we could get any feedback at that point, or, or if we approve this now, it's a carte blanche decision. Is that we have uh, there's going to be conditions that are that are there, that, so that's why the staff <clears throat> wanted one of the big reasons they wanted the bridge built now was to ensure that it would be built. I believe uh, and not, not skipped over in phase mm -hmm. five when you come in to do you know the the other side of the commercial on that pond if you were able to obtain uh access and come in from sunset boulevard mm -hmm. you potentially could skip building that bridge because you can you can the public the general public can reach you know that that phase of construction and the residential component and the one commercial component would be it, it doesn't make sense to do it but that could occur so uh, I guess the I guess the question would be that I guess that um, if I heard our county attorney correctly, then we can I guess make an assumption that there would be no um, changes in property values. Not getting his opinion. Correct, um, but I would advise that you take action, take judicial notice of that testimony at the prior hearing. Okay. If I may address this issue as well, thank you. Uh, that's a very stupid question, Commissioner Payne. Yes, it is hearsay, undoubtedly. Uh, however, evidence is somewhat relaxed. You do have to follow due process and you have to make sure you have confidence in what you're hearing. But you're not held to the same standard as District Court, Superior Court. If we're in one of those courts, obviously we couldn't do it. I think where I would direct your attention to is we're not talking about building any new buildings. We're not talking about expanding anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, so based on his testimony the last time, and then, of course, you can accept, or then again, I'm a lawyer, so that's a good reason not to accept <laughs> what I'm saying. I have conferred with him directly. I am an officer of the court, and he said his testimony would be the same. We are perfectly willing to make that uh, presentation with him in January if that would make you more comfortable or submit an affidavit from him to, to that effect. But you're right, it is here, sir. Okay. Well, thank you. I just wanted to make sure I was <clears throat> Right. No, uh, we've had to take we've we've uh, we've actually taken judicial notice before, uh, and that was that I have written down to get to that point. But I'm um, glad you brought it up so we could discuss it. Um, I want to get through this part of the testimony and um, see where we go from there. So, where were we? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Mark, go ahead. Please. So we would ask that that DOT approval not be a part of this phase of the development. Okay. And that any portion of the improvements that need to be constructed within the DOT right away be delayed till a future phase of the development. So as it stands right now, if you never get DOT approval, the phase behind Timbuktu with the other commercial component of this will never get built or you have to come in for another change and, and so, move the road basically across the pond to another right. so one of two things would have to happen either those would not ever get built like you said or 
we would need to propose a plan amendment before this board to find another way to access that part of the development. Okay. Do you have anything further? <clears throat> but I but I think that the that the board can be confident that DOT is not planning to move the bridge landing back to Timbuktu. There's not a lot of room over there. <laughs> um, anything further from you? Because I've got a couple questions I want to go through with you. Uh, yes, sir. Mark, if you yeah. could please the staff is uh, <clears throat> the, the boardwalk across the marsh. Right. Okay. Yeah, uh, the developer has uh, an issue with that, and he's proposing to build a dock or a pier for water access. Is that correct? Uh, he is. Uh, and, and let's let me go back to the master plan here for a second. This doesn't actually, the, the dock actually is off of the, the plan, but what you see here is we're proposing a walkway along the backs of these five single-family lots that would connect to a walkway from the uh, from the commercial part of the development. <clears throat> yeah. And um, that will then connect to a, a pier and uh, boat docks out over the water. So we agree that, that you know the water access is an integral part of the of the project. Well, I guess it's a matter of opinion, but it's a concern, which is well taken, is uh, public water access. Right. Okay. Uh, in one sense, if you walk out on a pier or a dock, you're over the water, and that may be more water access than looking at it than from just the boardwalk. Maybe that's a silly argument, but. Uh, what is the concern <clears throat> with, uh, and all both of these would require camera approval, is that correct? They would, and <clears throat> and if, you know, you've, if you've, you've seen in the packet that we've kind of, kind of gone back and forth with staff on this issue, um, and we had uh, agreed with staff that we would put, we had, it, we had it off altogether for this phase, but we had agreed to put it back on at uh, staff request. Um, but then we discovered that um, applying for a permit for and obtaining a permit for that part of the development could jeopardize the permit for the bigger development, um, according to our environmental consultant. Why is that? Well, because we're proposing a, a boardwalk that is wider than they will typically permit without a camera major and probably a denial and an appeal because and one of the big issues is public safety. Uh, we need a boardwalk that is at least eight feet wide in order to be able to get golf carts up and down along with pedestrians and potentially get uh, people back to uh, to an ambulance uh, if if they need to, to transport someone along this long 1,000 or 1,500 foot boardwalk. Yes, it would be eight feet wide all the way out. <laughs> Well, that, that, yeah, we would expect them to all be the same width. So, so you know, the boardwalk's an integral part of the boat, ba boat basin and the docks, um, and we expect that it will be permitted as part of the Cama Major permit. Um, At the eight feet? Pardon me? You expect that you will be able to get an eight-foot our oh, well, consultant no. believes that we will, but we have to go through a process, and that's going to take a while. So that, that's why we're asking that the permit condition be modified to not require this to be in place as a condition of final plat for this phase. Um, again, these you know, we will construct the walkway along the backs of these lots, so, as shown here. Does that show up on the screen? Do you have any idea what the length of the process could potentially be to get this built? Are we talking two years, three years? I mean, we thought we could get the, the Wellhead Club boat basin dredged <laughs> 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. so typically, uh, 150 days for a 
CAMA permit, major permit to run its course. When do you anticipate yeah, bringing in? Okay, so if we if this gets approved tonight, <clears throat> what will be the next phase for you guys? More housing? Uh, the next phase would be the the multifamily, but we'd be concurrently <laughs> pursuing the multifamily and the and the boat basin permitting. Okay. So, Mr. Bissell, so what you're proposing or what you'd like to see is to do away with the the boardwalk at this time until you. Is that I mean not the board with the walkway? What we'd like to do is construct a walkway that connect along the, around the backs of the lots, but not actually construct the elevated it, boardwalk it, across the marsh. Because the of the length of the camel process, it could be in in the peels of. And you know, but would and you Campbell still? Says, and, and Campbell would likely say, you know, we've approved a, a six foot boardwalk across here. Why? Why are you asking us for another boardwalk? So, so would you in the in in this phase? Then would you still go ahead if this was approved to go ahead and do that portion of it? Would you, as, as part of this, you would still apply for that though, and let the like I guess the chairman had said earlier when he was asking how long it would take. You could still apply for it though. So it's as you're starting this phase. As soon as it gets built, then you can take care of that. Yeah, we're actually hoping to apply for the permit in January. Okay, so that's going to be applied for. Okay, so. But, but the permit won't be issued until long after these lots could Fine, theoretically get a record. But then, but then once record. you get issued, you could build that walkway down. Okay. Right. So, so, then, right. so right. then I think the only, you know, downside is that, you know, the developer could be losing some value. You know, it's really a, you know, by not having water access when he prices these lots, but I think that's really a yeah, you know, kind of defeats the purpose issue. of a boat club, doesn't it, if you don't have water access. Did I hear you say that you already have a six foot wide allowed? Did you just already been approved for six foot? Did you just say that? Well a six foot wide is what they would typically approve through a normal permit process. <laughs> like I got you. Okay. So where does oh, sorry. Officer, go ahead. where does the boardwalk behind the property, if it doesn't connect to the bigger boardwalk, where where does it connect to at this point? Is it just a boardwalk for the sake of having a boardwalk, or is there something to which it actually connects at this point? It, it won't actually connect to the sound at this point. Uh, but will it connect to anything else other than just being a boardwalk behind? Will it go all the way to the commercial? It will go to the commercial. Okay, yes. all right. Because uh, right now, if I'm looking at that, it looks like it only connects to the boardwalk out to the sound. It doesn't actually look like it connects to the commercial. If I'm looking at the picture that's in our agenda packet and up on your screen. Right. Well, the, the commercial site hasn't actually been developed yet. What you're seeing here is a conceptual development plan for the I, commercial. I realize that. <laughs> and we, you know, what we envision is that there would be two connections to the commercial, one at the parking grade underneath and a second connection, which is why you see two board ranks there to the elevated uh, entertainment venue, which is being proposed uh, on the uh, second level. So the commercial the commercial lot here, the the sixth lot, mm -hmm. the boardwalk goes from the first lot all the way back to the commercial. It does. Okay. And eventually we'll also have a walkway going through the commercial back to yes, the street. Okay. Yeah, I see that. But right. but that's a different phase, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So while you're at this, uh, you know, it occurred to me if you don't get your – permission you got to bring potentially an 18 wheeler in here to service i mean the beer truck is an 18 wheeler <laughs> it's not a, it's not a 10 wheel truck um can that be accommodated on this lot for turning around well it, it can we we're we're, we're you know pr proposing a uh well actually there are two ways to turn around one is uh at the uh, at the uh CBU area, which has been designed to, to accommodate a, an emergency vehicle turnaround. Okay. It's right here. So that's, that's over 60 feet long, which will accommodate. Right, yeah, I mean, that's okay. I just want to make sure it doesn't, just looking at it on here, you know, I'm looking at it going, well, you know, when that, if that guy shows up, the Cisco guy shows up, 
two or three of them show up, you know, because they're on they're not on anybody's set schedule. They've got to fit in there somewhere to service the restaurant that's there, right? And um, it's going to get a little hectic in the morning when they show up or whenever they show up. Hopefully, it's on a Wednesday. <laughs> right. <laughs> Do you have anything uh, further for you? No, I'm, I'll be glad to answer all any right. questions. One, one last question. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Bissell, based upon your training and education <clears throat> experience and familiarity with the Kirkland County Unified Development Ordinance, do any of the developers suggested accommodations tonight, which you've gone through, like the boardwalk and the interconnectivity and so forth, do any of the things you mentioned violate the UDF? Is no. Now written? no, they don't. Okay, thank you. All right, so I've got a few questions for you then. Um, you mentioned, uh, let's see here. Where to start? Well, uh, you were asked earlier about interconnectivity, and was there any other neighborhoods or anything else to, near this project? And didn't really answer that, but there is, and it's Tim Buck too. Right. So the interconnectivity is very important, I think, when we're talking about this project both in, the, in its success in the future to have access to that potential, you know, pool of people and, and creating the interconnectivity that we're after. So if you don't have that interconnectivity, how do you meet interconnectivity score with a, basically you end up with a cul-de-sac? Well, it's, it's similar to what the way inter, interconnectivity connectivity is typically scored on mainland development where you have a, an adjacent farm track that you stub a road out to and, uh, and you haven't gotten a farmer's permission to stub that road but you do get your connectivity score credit for making that stub connection so this would be similar to that okay um one of the things, and I know you have it in here, it's a little early, but um, over the last two years with COVID, we've seen people move to Corolla, and it was an area that was not intended to be neighborhoods in a normal neighborhood sense, and we don't have enough mailboxes there. Um, I know you have you have a, a cluster box set up in there. Um, are you? Do you guys anticipate putting in enough to handle every residence in there, or just ten of them, or something? Yes. No. There's. 36 uh, residences proposed here, including the upper story dwelling, so there would be at least that many mailboxes. Okay. So. Um, will you be bringing up a traffic expert, Mr. Morse? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, wait for that then. Um, Can I uh, elaborate on, you know, there was a question earlier about this parallel parking. Um, mm hmm and we went ahead and showed it on this plan. Uh, I just wanted to kind of clarify that question that was beyond street parking. Beyond the on street parking. Yeah. And um, we showed it on this plan, and we showed it, you know, being striped, striped off, off with temporary yeah. no parking signs until the uh, UDO is potentially changed to allow that. And we're showing it now because if we did it later, we would have to tear out curb and gutter, sidewalks, uh, and, uh, you know, just redo a lot of improvements that mm -hmm. would be costly. So, and at the um, community meeting, um, that was probably the comment we heard more often than anything was we need more parking in Kerala. Um, and, in fact, the suggestion to do on-street parking here came out of one of those community meetings. All right. <laughs> That's a that's an oxymoron. This is very. <laughs> I think we just passed no on street parking a couple meetings ago in Corolla. So. <clears throat> All right. Any other questions from the board? Not all traffic I'm related. I have one for uh, Mr. Kemp when we get opportunity. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Bissell. Appreciate your time this evening. Thank you.
Do you like to talk to Kevin now? I, uh, what is the allowable density of Monterey Shores? Oof, that's a genuine question. I can answer that. It's um, it's sub it's actually subject to the sketch plan. So the approved density is um, let's see. Seven hundred and forty seven units in the PUD. So what will this, if it's approved, bring it up to? So the sketch plan's already been approved for the thirty six units on this parcel. So we're well within their allowable density. Sure, the, the amended sketch plan was approved to allow this development. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Jenny, while you're on on the mic, uh, um, you guys uh, and I have some real problem with this. Um, if we were to move this boardwalk and bridge to another phase um i know you guys want to see it here now uh mm. I, but do you do you really feel it's that big a deal that we couldn't put I, it as a condition that before phase four is started or something along those lines i do not believe that the project meets the internal street connectivity requirement without the bridge is that correct mark is that your understanding? You're using that bridge as a street stub out to meet interconnectivity standards, correct? Correct. Correct. So if it doesn't go across and stop, then they... It, they, it doesn't meet the UDO. We don't, we don't object to it going across and stopping. <clears throat> yeah. We're not objecting to taking it across the pond. We're just saying that we can't actually connect it to DOT without DOT's approval. Right, right. But and the potential is you may not be able to. Is that correct? I mean, right. There's a possibility you may not. Have to, Depends how obligation thinking. goes, correct. But So the question is not a question of if, it's a question of when. If the answer is never, then I think we qualify, we're, we qualify meeting uh, paragraph 5.6.4C, reduction in minimum connectivity score, which states the minimum connectivity index score may be reduced if the owner developer is, it demonstrates it is not possible to achieve due to either topographic conditions, natural features, existing road configuration, or existing or adjacent existing development patterns, in which case the internal street design shall achieve as high a connectivity index score as is reasonably practical. And, and that's correct, and we actually did speak about that in, in re reviewing this. And the big key here is that this development was a plan that was proposed by the applicant. Mm -hmm. Staff did not design this project, but we do want to make sure that it is completed in a manner consistent with the plan that was presented to this board and approved. And so that's why that's why there's been that much conversation about it and we feel like the approval is necessary. Um, Mark spoke to DOT and their stance. I haven't seen anything from DOT in writing regarding their stance on this. And whether it's right of way or it's DOT or Turnpike Authority, there's been mixed messages so it's just it's it's kind of unclear and and it, it needs to be resolved and according to the sketch plan this is the time to do that so uh mr turner if they came in and did a did a put a cul-de-sac in here uh as, a t as another way if they came in their original idea was just coming off malia coming into a, a cul-de-sac uh basically a one road neighborhood it would not be scored well enough to be approved because it doesn't have interconnectivity well they they that's it's possible we would have to review it based on the language that mr. Bissell just read that they could do that I mean we, we like uh, see I mean we have it, it's possible one road neighborhood right and just they would, go in and stop and that's and it they would need to amend their plan to do right. that they'd have to, amend so they'd have to, to come back before us with a different plan at that right point. or amend this plan 
But again, we don't have an objection to extending this road as far as we reasonably can without encroaching onto the DOT property. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, I'm just just plain devil's advocate here because it seems like uh, if you can't get it, it's a it's a a pretty tremendous expense to put this in to have it go nowhere in the end. And now we're left with 20 years from now, and it happens in neighborhoods on the mainland where the farm field may never sell, and there's a stub out there, and it just sits there. Um, that could be the case here. Um, and you guys have enough. I could see one problem, and that is that people are going to walk across this thing or bicycle across this thing and try and cut through the current DOT property to get to Timbuktu. And um, one of the concerns I have that you brought up, that you raised, is that there's, there's going to be a drop-off. There's a different an elevation. Um, you want, you, I mean, you're going to have golf carts that all zipping through there. I, well, I mean, I would assume they put a, a, a guardrail or something, a bulkhead at the yeah. end to stop it. But, but they're going to try and drive off the sides, uh, do whatever. Um, at this point, would you be proposing to bring any kind of sidewalk beside the road into, or when you when you put this little bridge road in over the pond, would you at that same time build a sidewalk? We would build a sidewalk. It looks okay. like there's one on the. Plane. It shows, yeah, for for what they've sent to us, but then then it's going to just stop. And it's going to be a sidewalk to nowhere, kind of like we're dealing with on NC12. Um, and, that, and that still wouldn't meet the interconnectivity piece, though, correct? That's that's vehicular interconnectivity, right? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. You guys aren't making it easy. Just Mark, stop making hard projects. All right. Anything else for Mr. Bissell? All right. Would you like to call your next witness? You want to take a break now? Okay. You know what? Let's uh, take a five-minute break, and we'll, we'll jump back in in a minute. Got everybody back. Get to have just a minute here. You're on, sir. When we move forward with this traffic analysis. All right, sir, would you give the board your name, please? Uh, Andrew Tom. And how, where you reside, sir? Uh, I reside in Raleigh. Okay, and what is your profession? I'm a professional, professional engineer, North Carolina traffic engineer. All right, and where did you obtain your education? Uh, undergrad in civil engineering from Virginia Tech and a master's from NC State. Wow, I'm sorry you didn't get an education. Yeah. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> All right, we won't talk about that football game, though. Um, now, are, are you, you say you're licensed uh, as a civil engineer? Yes, sir. Okay, and is the subspecialty of civil engineering also deal with traffic flow analysis? That's right. Traffic safety analysis. Yes, okay. sir. And what is your experience in rendering opinions and doing analysis of that subject, traffic flow, traffic safety. Yeah, I've completed over 100 traffic impact studies in North Carolina. All right, sir. Uh, now, you previously testified before this board in March, I believe, that you had examined the project in total and that it was, uh, it was safe, that there was nothing uh, in the plans that from a traffic standpoint or a traffic flow standpoint would cause any danger or hazard. Correct. That's correct, sir. All right. Uh, and is that the opinion you still hold tonight? Yes, sir. All right. Now, you've heard the discussion, uh, well taken, about um, this uh, Amelia, is that the way you pronounce it? Amelia Drive? Uh, Amelia. Uh, well, anyway, <laughs> that place. You're close we're, enough. We know where you're talking about. I don't know where we are. Uh, in the event that that had to end, uh, just bluntly, without not connecting to anything, from a traffic analysis and based upon your training, education, and skill and experience as a traffic engineer, would that cause a, a public danger? Uh, no, sir, it would not. Would it cause a traffic flow or congestion problem? 
Yes, sir. As a traffic engineer, would it make any difference to you at all in the opinion you previously gave whether we have uh, a connection through NCDOT right away or not? Uh, no, sir, it wouldn't make a difference. All right, thank you. Commissioners, have any questions? Did you have anything you wanted to present before we? I know we got some questions for you. So. Yeah, feel free to ask me. Okay. Commissioner Jarvis, I know you're um, just you out of a curiosity. Um, let me get to that page. Why, why was uh, traffic studied on a Wednesday? What was the thinking there? Um, it's pretty common for um, traffic impact studies to, to, to be considered uh, midweek. We did want to capture uh, during the summer before the, the Labor Day weekend, but typically midweek conditions. So it, it wouldn't be advantageous to say look at it on a Saturday or uh, when traffic is at its peak we we had that discussion um, we uh, scoped it originally within CTOT as to what would be the reasonable um, analysis period and we selected midweek as the analysis period for this okay. um, are you, was that yeah. it? okay so this is different than a normal traffic scenario is it not it's in that uh, this is a tourist area that's right that's right uh, obviously it's a uh, very high signal uh, variation in this area as you mm -hmm. So when when you look at a tourist area, do you look at it the same way as any other traffic study? Because you know in your report you've mentioned the time frames, and nobody's moving at eight o'clock in the morning. They're not going to work seven. or seven o'clock in the morning. They're probably still rolling over in bed. So um, hopefully, if they're on vacation. So <laughs> I, I wish if you'd expand on that a little bit. Uh, some of the rationale maybe on why the time frame when it's a little it's completely different actually the way that the, the tourist habits are in this area so well, and, then, and, and whether you expand on that i'll too i just want to add to that it isn't the turnovers on saturdays and sundays to have more traffic oh yeah saturday and sunday yes yeah, so, i mean I, that was going to be part that's, of that's what yes. was my question okay sure sure um obviously uh you know this is a facility that's that's open would be open year-round um you know, we had that decision, discussion within CDOT, what, what to look at midweek, summer midweek was kind of the discussion that we we, uh, we landed on. That was the uh, data that we were able to collect for this location. But without a doubt, there's uh, seasonal variation year-round out here. Well, yeah, that, it, it just uh, the whole thing, the numbers are completely wrong, basically. And, 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 I, and I'm incorporating, because there's proposed uh, – attachment to Sunset Boulevard for this coming into the Timbuktu uh, shopping center. There's nothing open there but one breakfast joint at 9 o'clock in the morning. So there's not going to be any traffic there, 7, 8, 9. Fast forward to 11 or 12 o'clock during the day on a, on a normal week, and it's a, it's, 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 it's a zoo basically at that point in time. So um, it's, it, the information conveyed it isn't matching up with what we know on the ground, right, just living there. So did, did was was your input solely from the state of when to do the study, or did you get other input from other individuals in that area when the study would be, or did you strictly go off of Wednesday because that's what the state said to do? Well, and um, you, you know, know, I will we'll say, say that, that you know we we pay attention to, to what you know, know these uses generate, generate right? And uh, uh, you know, four five dwelling units, units you know, uh, houses. houses generate a fair number of trips, uh, I mean, roughly 10, 10 trips per day, about, a, about one trip per peak hour. Uh, in the grand scheme of things, very, very low trip generation for those uses. And the same thing for a, a um, commercial development, a restaurant. Um, we do have, we do pay attention to when those generate their you know, peak number of trips. That's what we use as the national standards. So how familiar are you with that area? Very familiar. You, so you've, you've been down there on, on Saturdays and Sundays and That's right. you've driven in there, but you still thought Wednesday was the best day? Well, Wednesday is when we, we looked at the analysis. Um, you know, we do have that uh, peak hour analysis that was conducted and, uh, you know, roughly about 35 trips. But certainly, uh, you know, no, it was the route was has some more than the same variation. Saturdays would be easier enough. Right. Big week in the summer. Uh, Commissioner my, McCord. My computer just died. I didn't grab my <laughs> plug because I was rushing to get here. But uh, I did ask, like you said, the morning time compared to the to the rush. 
of, of, of there. I mean, I don't have an issue with the Wednesday because the Saturday and Sunday, they're coming in one time. They're full of a bunch of stuff. So I don't have an issue with more per se of the Wednesday, but I do have an issue of the time as far as, you know. And your, your peak times, you uh, you based it from 7 to 11, if I remember. 7 to 9. 7, 7 to nine. 9. That's right, yeah. And then, and then the afternoon, it was 4 to 6 or four something. Six. So then that's typical of a normal residential scenario, is it not? And that, that, that would be the real common in any scenario. scenario. Um, you know, the guidelines that we use, the NCDOT guidelines require uh, use of the adjacent street peak, um, and which is typically four to six and seven to nine. Okay. All right. Any other questions from the board? All right. Anything you'd like to add? Um, we, we did, did look, look at, at you know scenarios with, with the lower connection, connection and with the the uh, upper connection only to Molia and, and um, you know very modest delay uh, with even with sending all the traffic out through the one to one driveway. I've got one question for you. One of the things that I um, I'd mentioned to uh, the developer long before this was. Uh, came to us was turning the connection from sunset into a one-way so traffic comes in from Timbuktu but you can't exit out you know one of the requests was to move the entrance a hundred feet uh, to to allow for more stacking internally there's no room to do that there's a giant oak tree in the way um, and uh, so flipping the script if it if it goes if it the conditions placed and they agree to it to move this one way in so that in the future the traffic has to come in and go out through Malia. How do you feel about the traffic scenario at that point if all the traffic that would come into this would go out that way? I suspect they would still have that, the connection to the north. Some would choose to use that uh, for sure. Um, whether there is a sunset was one way or two way. Um, I believe operations would, would work acceptably either way. Um, One-way traffic tends to simplify the operations of a signal. Um, so, so I think it would work as two-way or one. Right. Two well, yeah, not service. sunset I would leave in its, its current format, but where you turn right in to go to the, to, the, to the market that's there and ultimately in the future to access the properties, um, that road, which is yet to be named, the DOT property, I'm suggesting to be one way in. So we don't have that problem of trying to come out and turn left when you've got cars stacked up from the light back into Sunset and well back into the Timbuktu waiting in there. It's just going to create a, a parking nightmare, basically. Um, so anyway, I just uh, wanted to get your opinion on that. If, if all the traffic directed through has to exit out through Malia, does that cause a major concern for you? Uh, no. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. Um, before we move on to uh, public comment, uh, we do have to uh, take up the matter of judicial notice of Stephen Craddock's previous testimony. Um, is the board okay with accepting his previous testimony here tonight that, um, that this does not cause any harm and will not affect property values? Do you need that, like, in the form of a motion if we accept it? I don't think we do. Just generally speaking, generally the, the, an understanding from the board that I'm you're willing fine. to accept I'm that. Fine. I'm good. I'm fine with that. <clears throat> I, I do have one quick other question yes, before sir. we get to talk. Um, we, you brought up a point about possibly one way down Malia Drive, mm -hmm. um, and I believe the individual, would that create, if, we, if that was changed, would that create any hardship of current businesses or current conditions or anything not, with not the owner only, of the property or the only the only place I'm suggesting so when you come in at the at the stoplight and turn left into Timbuktu right you make an immediate right to go to the farm market that's huh. there correct currently traffic comes in and out huh. well it's just for the farm market and it's a congestive nightmare okay. so throw in the neighborhood the commercial everything else that's going on my suggestion is that that road now becomes one way so anyone that comes in at the light. At the light, when they turn right to go towards the what is now the farm market or the existing commercial construction that's going to go on on the pond uh, in, in future five, six, seven, whatever it is, uh, that those cars have to exit out through the neighborhood, go out through Malia Drive, okay. because there's no room at all to, to turn left flow out. 
Right. Okay. There's just no room. Then you can just make that right turn back onto the Yeah, road. and okay. once you get over to Malia, you can go out through the miniature golf course. You can okay. go out through the old Stan White building, down by OB okay. Gas, or even Ace Hardware. So there's about four different exit opportunities okay. for you okay. in that area. Um, now, I can't straight, place... Straight or right only would be their only option coming off, off, off of that. Right. Straight or right. Left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they come in, they turn in. If they go to the um, shops over here on the back side of that lake... Um, they would have to take a left and go out across the bridge that we're talking about tonight, and then and then continue out to to 12 through through the neighborhood. I do have to, uh, I guess, ask your uh, your client ultimately if they are willing to accept that condition because it would be a condition of the use permit. Rick, if you would come on up to the mic and um, did you get sworn in? I did. Okay, so if you would just state your name and address. Rick Willis, uh, president of Outer Banks Ventures. And I was listening to the discussion about the one-way road. Would that mean everybody that goes to the produce stand would drive through the subdivision I'm right. proposing? Right, right. Yeah, and be exposed to all your businesses back there. Yeah. So, uh, you know, how much volume? Now, throw in your businesses that will be back there, plus the neighborhood trying to come out right. at Timbuktu. I, I understand the problem we're solving. I just don't want to create one at the same time. Would it make sense if the bridge itself was one way so that anybody that was back in the subdivision couldn't come out? Well, you'd have a problem getting your people that are in the neighborhood to your commercial development on the far side of the pond on the future development portion. Right. So I, I don't, I'm, I'm worried about the farm market, how they're going to feel if all their customers have to drive around instead of how, they, how they're allowed to travel right now. Well, they're pro they're going to be able to get out. I mean, that's the problem. I mean, you've, you live there. You see what it's like right. now. Throw your neighborhood into that or, you know, this development into that equation. Um, the, the traffic's going to be a nightmare. It's actually probably, I would think, better for them to have their customers leave out through Malia. Yeah, I, I don't I mean, object from what I'm what I'm seeing right now without talking to Mr. Bissell, I, I don't object to that. Right. Well, it, it is something that I, if, if this gets approved tonight, that I would make a condition. So you have to agree to those conditions beforehand. Right. I, I, I don't have a problem with that. I hadn't thought during discussions I'd had with you before that we would be directing the, the produce stand as well to do that. Right. I well, understood that there was some thought of my subdivision having to egress from, from one way. Well, uh, Mr. Bissell, would you come on up to the mic for a minute? <clears throat> so <clears throat> in laying out the traffic design for this thing, if we made the vegetable stand two-way, uh, it would create more confusion for traffic coming in from the Corolla Boat Club only being able to turn right to go or to access the parking over there. I mean, it, it seems to me that you would have, you'd have to put up some kind of a stop mechanism to keep them from coming over to the vegetable stand, basically, if you will, uh, or farm tried market. To separate the two tra <laughs> traffic flows. One thing that could be done would be to put a no left turn, turn there coming mm -hmm. from Malia toward the uh, the causeway coming across the pond. Okay. And well, that's that not. Would, that would keep traffic from the subdivision from exiting uh, the Sunset Boulevard. Well, you want you want traffic. Uh, well, the interconnectivity is part of it, and it's kind of the exact opposite of interconnectivity, right? What I'm suggesting. But the problem is, is the traffic there is already a problem, mm. and we're going to couple that and add to that um, drastically by adding in you know, the commercial aspects of this, probably not so much the residential, but certainly the commercial aspects, multifamily housing. We've seen how many people pack into a house in Kerala. They may have a five-bedroom house, and they got ten cars there because every teenager drove their car down, so they don't have to be stuck with mom and dad. So, uh, you know, thinking about all of that, um, it, it just seems that it's, it's not well thought out to come out of the neighborhood onto Sunset Boulevard, how that would occur. Like I said, there's no, there is almost no room to move the entrance. There's a, a giant oak tree that you're going to have to take down and plant a couple more, I would assume, um, based on it being a heritage tree. 
I, don't, I really hate for that tree to go away too. That one. It's a pretty tree. Right. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm guessing I'm, I'm asking how do we how do we solve this problem now while we're here, putting you on the spot. Uh, well, what if the for my commercial area? What if if there was a uh, only left turn exit, no right turn, right coming from my commercial, and basically treating the flow from the produce stand entirely separately? Which, which I know, I know isn't, isn't necessarily what you want to do, but <laughs> allowing them to continue to go in and out. Right, right. It's a weird, weird problem because they, you know, how long is that produce stand going to be there? Right. Well, that's the other problem. Yeah, it's a, it, uh, and it, the whole situation is going to change when. Right. If that changes. <clears throat> Yeah, it, it's, I'd like to see it say, but something's going to be there. Right. Well, and that, exactly. Something's going to. Well, it, unless the state decides to widen, do a traffic circle. If they decide to take out the light and do a, a four-lane traffic circle there, now we got another problem, and that's their problem to solve. But again, the road that you know their their property right there is is going to be right up against it, trying to come out of there. So it's just a it's creating a, a traffic. Just complete headache, basically. One of the things that we were proposing to do uh, in connection with uh, getting DOT's approval for the use of this was to kind of reconfigure that, too. To, it's kind of free form right now. The, the parking spaces aren't well defined. The travel lanes not well defined. There's not a well defined loading or um, unloading area. You know, all those things can be done because there's a lot of property that's not really being utilized there, and, and it could be paid and made more formal, so it would work better too. Do you know if there's any ability to widen Sunset Boulevard to accommodate a left turn lane and a right turn lane or a right straight or something to that effect? The the, the Sunset Boulevard is actually on the NCDOT property, so. You'd have to get permission from NCDOT to modify right. Sunset Boulevard, and best the, in exploring that, there's not an easement for what's there already. Okay, it's just there. It's just there, but it looks like, from the standpoint of looking at the roads, there's plenty of real estate there that it could be expanded. I'm just, you know, that that's the other thing is that you know that light is, as you know, it's just a green light, and you're relying on cars turning left or turning right and everybody using signals and it's amazing we don't have more accidents there. Um, oh, we have some there. Yeah, I know. Uh, so it just just thinking this through, I, I'm not sure what the answer is, but I know the way that it is now does not work, adding more traffic volume to it. I know that. And I, it's, a, it's a complaint we've heard. Yeah, I think your point is well taken. What I, I can't answer with certainty is whether that, that there's someone that would be harmed if we made it one way for everything. I, I, I'm not positive. No, so. I don't think so. The question about being harmed, and Kevin just asked, you know, would it hurt the farm market some? Well, the potential is that the customers coming from your development would not have a way to access the farm market vehicularly. They, they could walk over or something to that effect, they'd but they couldn't. Come out, make the light, make the light they'd have to swing out and come back in if they were going to drive over there to yes. get something from the market. I would, I would consider that suffering harm. So they have to take a couple of extra right turns. Uh, it's, but that's considering we go. That's considering we doing the one way right. pattern through there. Right, and that, and it, it, that just seems to stop the the, the, the the massive congestion right there at that intersection, internally in that in that shopping center. Would it be would it be reasonable to uh, leave this item open and let us have until when we come in for final plat approval to submit a plan for one way access? In other in other words, give us give us give us some time to yeah to, to get the get the issue studied. That's I'm not sure how to like work right? that out. I'm gonna probably need a little Somebody guidance on that it? one. Okay, would you like to comment and it, on this? And now I've opened a can of worms uh, with interconnectivity, time. right, Jenny? Because if we make a decision to come back so we can't do it, then. Oh. Well, uh, does that mean if I if I cause the uh, give them the give them the pass? I mean, I would I definitely would 
need more time to kind of process right. how that change might impact the okay. development proposal. I'm sorry, what was that again? Be real, I said I would need more time to process how that change would impact the development proposal. I just. Mm -hmm. okay. It's hard to do it on the fly right, right. right now. I know. I know, I'm, I'm dumping it on you, but Could can't talk about this stuff before you guys get in the room, so here we are. Uh, so, uh, okay. Can we do it? You know, I think would, would, the, would the, uh, the market be able to exit it? They, they, all that traffic wouldn't even make sure to continue. I'm sorry, what was it? The farmers in the produce market, would they be able to exit like they do today? Or they, they well, so my thought was to make them all, all the traffic that would come in on that little stub there uh, go out through Malia. Now, through, through his development, and Rick uh, posed a question, maybe just the farm market continues to operate as it does. And they'd, so they'd have to engineer some sort of traffic solution to keep his traffic inside the development staying within the development and not coming back out through that way, further exacerbating you know, the congestion at that intersection. Mr. Chairman, could, could, yeah. is it possible that we could motion to um, continue. Could continue this to allow for some studies oh, yeah, to be done well, to come back? Okay. Yeah, that, I think we're getting there. But okay, okay. We, got, sorry, we okay. got them here in the room tonight, yeah. so uh, there's no reason to – Cause you know, their tra their experts to travel again here if we can handle that this evening. So, so I'm sorry. That's yeah. And just throwing out. That yeah. So, so we, you know, our scenario didn't have that connection. We sent all of our traffic. On right. The, uh, so we we sort of tested a worst case now. Someone could enter into the south. That would take a little pressure off the, the, that side. But we know it works with just one connection. So, you know, it would work out. Okay. With this. Would that solve the interconnection? Well, that's so. Uh, that's what I was asking Ms. Turner, and she's got to look at it. Um, it couldn't get approved tonight. Um, she's right. got to look at it and see what that means because there is a, an allowance for not having interconnectivity, right? So, but they've got to further review that. Uh, Mark talked about it in his testimony earlier. So, um, yeah, at the end of the day, I've thrown, a, thrown another. <laughs> Cog in the totally wheel. confused all of us. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> That's what I'm good at. That's why think, you put me up here. I think Keep what the chairman, here. what he's proposing, I think, like you said, it's A, there's already a problem there with the market and all the, the traffic coming through, especially obviously not today, but in July and June and August there it is. But I think, like you said, what you're proposing, I think it could be figured out in, between staff and, and Rick and his people, and I think it actually could solve a lot of the problem. Right. Would it solve the problem of DOT not approving? Or? No. Now, so that that's that's something totally different. Um, if if the if DOT doesn't approve this project or or give them uh, you know access to their property, they're going to have to engineer a different traffic scenario period to bring to develop this this future phase, and they'd have to come back to us because it would be an amended sketch plan to deal with it at that time. However, having that bridge there, uh, if, if this was approved tonight, um, gets them the stub out for future connectivity. So that's what, you know, the, one of the big concerns was that, A, that gets built there and it's there for the future, and, and that, not, that it just never happens. Um, so that fixes that problem. The big question is that, that traffic right there, if it, if it were approved. If it's never approved, it doesn't matter. They're going to have to come back with us with a different design plan for how to how to move traffic internally. Does that explain it for you? Mm -hmm. All right. I made sense once once tonight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I I would much prefer, prefer to not get tabled. I understand the board is, is right. Considering possibly doing that, but. The time frame that all of this takes I know. is quite expensive. I understand all that. That's why I was get, getting the conversation out tonight so we don't have to have everybody come back up here again. If we do move you to uh, our next meeting in January, uh, it does give time though, to answer these questions because as it sits right now, I'm not sure that this board is entirely comfortable with, with passing this tonight. Um, there, there are some questions that need to be answered. and. Uh, and I think one of those uh, Mr. Bissell could look at too is is how do we deal with the pedestrian traffic 
coming across that road, what does that look like? Do they do you, do you give them some kind of path for an ingress and egress for foot traffic into Timbuktu now, or at least terminating into the existing gravel parking lot, right, or something along those lines? You're going to have people moving across that bridge because it's there. It's you know it's available to them, and we see it where they drop off at Monterey by the bank and on bicycles and almost crash into NC12 hourly. <coughs> so. It's on your mind. I was just kind of studying this while you were while you were talking. There is a, an area there, and I was studying the issue of this pedestrian connectivity. There's, mm -hmm. a, there's an area that's probably 100 feet long between where the improvements that serve the farm market end and the and the DOT right away end right. that we would be connecting to. And that's just uh, basically a field right now, right? It's going to rush. Field and just kind of drops off toward the pond. But there's no, cause there's no structures around that, correct? Mm -mm. No, it's just grass back there, dune grass, weeds, yeah. sand spurs. All right. I have a issue with the fact that we're talking about the farm market, and we heard it's on a month-to-month -month basis on rent. And it's been like that forever. Yeah, but it could go away next week, and we're asking him to reconfigure his development based on a what if. Well, and also, too, we don't know what DOT's decision is going to be either. That's another what if. We just talked yeah, about Well, the that problem earlier. is if we don't deal with, if we leave it as is, as suggested tonight, we're not going to see them again unless there's some other major change and they have to come before us again. Right, I, I, I so, and that will be addressed then. If. If. So let's say that everything goes right, the stars align, uh, February or March, so the judge comes out and says, yep, build the bridge. And then, and DOT says, yeah, we'll let you have this property. Everybody's happy. Um, we'll never see them again, and we're right back to square one. And the farm market continues for another 10 years. That's the best possible scenario, right? And then we still got the same traffic issues only multiplied. And we will never see them again to deal with that. So if it's a condition that, that it it'd be addressed beforehand, it's, it's just dealt with, and they don't have to come back to us again. It's a little bit of time now instead of maybe months later. And, and then staff needs, did, did staff need some time to go back and right. look at it gives, some things too? Right, it gives them some time to look over this, my harebrained scheme, and see if, <laughs> see if it meets the EDA. Um, and then it gives Mark some time to do a little bit of analysis and, and put some thought into it well, as well. And I, and I would just think probably clear some commissioner's thoughts right now, clear up a few things and um, with some concerns probably with that traffic and right. the flow. So, well, that, that, well, that's... Okay. I'm just saying, yeah, that... You know, we need to go back. I have a, qu I have a question. Well, that's what Kenny has to look at. Is it possible for the board to have somebody from the commissioners be available to work on a solution to this mm -hmm. outside of the hearing? No. 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 It all has to be taking place during the hearing. So that's why I'm just bringing it up tonight while you're all here. we got the brain trust together, right? So everybody's here. Um, and... Uh, yeah, we can. And, and it may be that, you know, you come back and you say, it's just, it's, we, we can't make it work out, uh, you know, and, and that's it, and that's where we're at. But I think it does bear examination for the future um, to look at that. I mean, that, you know, that just knowing that intersection the way that I do, when I go over there, it's like you're cringing trying to think about how you're going to have to get out of there and how I'm going to have to sit there to do it. So, um it's just from personal opinion. It, it, it's a one-way work. I think it actually could benefit this whole project as well, too. So that's that's kind of where we're at. Um, I think you guys benefit from giving you know give us taking a little more time with this as well. Uh, ultimately, as Commissioner Payment well, suggested. Would, yes, I mean I would. I mean, if we're done, I mean, I was going to make a motion wherever we're ready. I mean, well, we can do that. Uh, I can hold off on public comment in case any of the public wants to come yeah, and comment I was, I was going to suggest that if we have to hold the public comment, that way when we come back and discuss whether we can do something, then they can have some feedback on that as well. Okay. Uh, Rick? If, if you're, I, I don't know you haven't made a motion, but this would require 
all the same testimony you've already heard or just no it's, it'd be coming back uh with mark um talking to us we, we we're basically leaving this open for further discussion uh mr bissell could come back in and say yeah we've, we've we've looked at it we think we can make this work and accommodate your request and and then and, and i think everybody's happier in the end uh hopefully that's what he comes back with we're making changes to this plan does it have to go all the way back through trc well that's the i don't know if that's considered a major change because uh that that would be a question for our planning staff or director i conceptually the plans everything's still there you haven't moved any of the pieces you just changed the traffic flow yeah. That's part of what we'll need to look at, I believe, right. Right. is whether it would need to go back through a, a process. Would, yeah, would, if, if that's the case, then I will with, withdraw that. I'm not going to make you wait months to go through this process again. Would they need affidavits from the traffic engineer and Mr. Crotic? Um when they came back? Would they need would they need those affidavits so we could consider everything? With the changes at that time? With the changes, yes. If it's any change uh, in their prior testimony. An engineer just testified that if if we if, if that change took place, he was comfortable. So he did. We've got his testimony that that okay. that it would not adversely well, impact. Even before he sees what it looks like, though. <laughs> well, I the mean, flow I, of traffic. This was okay. designed. He in his testimony, they looked at two models. One of them was just using Malia Drive, and the other was using both phases okay. and right, either way fine. he was comfortable with the amount of traffic that was going to be produced if we just use solely Malia Drive so yeah the traffic I mean, the, the road would change it would just be the flow on the road mm -hmm. that's what we're talking about mm -hmm. and it's just one little portion of it yeah. 100 feet yes sir and as far as the connection we could actually you know, build the connection and probably get within 10 or 15 feet of the DAT right away and just it back to the Right there well, I'm thinking uh, on your on your connection currently, you, you're going to need some kind of physical barrier there, yeah. a guardrail or whatever, to stop it, and golf carts and you, would, uh, you, know, <laughs> you almost got to bracket them in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, as a developer, I'll say it doesn't make sense to me that there's a right of way purchased by the state with right of way money that I'm not even getting an answer on whether I can use. Right. That makes no sense. Yeah, well, that's the lawyers that are the problem, I think. And I, I believe ours, yours has a comment. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you talked about, I guess, the proper protocol would not be a continuous, but a recess, so you don't have to re-advertise. Right. And when is your next meeting? Uh, I have to look at the count. 17th of January. For the 17th. All right, well. Is that sufficient time for everybody to do what they got to do? You feel like staff? Do you feel like that's sufficient time for you guys to? I would think so. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. And if we could have, uh, if that's the, the inclination of the board, if we could have you specifically put to the engineer and staff what it is you want them to resolve, mm -hmm. then we'd be glad to uh, accommodate that. Okay. Uh, well, we're not there yet, but Mr. Bissell, do you understand what I'm asking? A hundred percent. So, okay. And Ms. Turner, Mr. Kemp, you guys understand what we're after. Your their staff's portion of this is figuring out if I mess up interconnectivity, basically, right? And does it have to go back through the entire review process because it could be considered a substantial change, right? Right. Okay. So. That being said, Mr. Payman, I, th I feel like you you feel like you want to make a motion. Well, I just want to make sure. Then, did, did we have to, I guess, state in a motion the the questions that we're looking to get answered, or or at Mr. Bissell's um, uh, acknowledgement that he understands what we're after? Is that that's sufficient? That's that sufficient. that would okay. not need to be in the okay, form of a fine. motion. Well, <coughs> I'm just going to make a motion that we, we before he makes the motion. On one second. Yes, I think you would have to open the public hearing so you can. Recess it. Well, I, my motion I'll was going to be to hold it as at the point that we're at right now to allow for public comment to come in and make any comments on the on the changes, changes of the one way direction. Open the public here and then recess. Well, it. If, if you if you recess right now, 
you haven't got to the point Correct. Of, of, of a public uh, right. comment. Right. So we, and so when you recessed, you came back into session on this. Then we're at this point now. You open public, public That's what I was going to do, do public comment at that point. Right. We're better off to, yes, leave it. If, we, if I do it, then I'm going to close yeah. down their testimony phase. Yes. Moving into the public hearing. You have to have it? What do you have to have it? No, it's Not for the recess. No, if you state, and you state when it's going to be recessed to the date yeah. of the next meeting. All right. Well, so, then, then, then I'm going to make a motion that we, re, we, we recess this item um, until our next meeting, January 17th. Um, the PB 87-86 Monterey Shores Phase 10 be, um, like I said, recessed until January 17th. And at this point, so that um, we still have the public comment portion. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, hearing none, we'll see you guys back here very shortly. I appreciate your patience on this, but we need to get it right the first time. And we'll just give them a minute to get out before we move on to the next item. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah, yeah I think you said we could do that. She, she made the comment we could do after David's. Yes. All right, moving on <clears throat> to new business, item A, board appointments. And the first uh, one we have this evening is uh, the Board of Adjustments. 58. I believe that is a... Mr. Chairman, I believe I have one for that, which I'm going to be, our next meeting I'll have, I'll send an email for who okay. I have in mind for that. Well, tonight we have Robin King, who's eligible for reappointment to the Board of Adjustment. I'd like to, I'd like to um, reappoint Robin Kane for a second term board of adjustments. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Uh, Ms. Lena, thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you all. Next item is the planning board. Um, and I spoke with Ms. Jarvis earlier today. I believe she is going to handle that one as a slate. Uh, I would like to make a motion to do a slate. Uh, approval for uh, the four um, members of the planning board that can be reappointed to be reappointed. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Uh, and I have a, a planning board that needs to be replaced, which I'm going to have for the next January meeting I'll send. Great. All right, number three, Tourism Advisory Board. I believe Ms. Kitty, you have an appointment to that? I have an appointment, Daryl Harlow. For reappointment. Who has done a great job, by the way. I will second that. Thank you. Uh, any, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, it's unanimous. Thank you. Number four, appointment. Are we going to reappoint? Oh, yeah, yeah I've, got, I've, got, I've got one. Um, oh, sorry, I missed it. I'm sorry, no, Sharon Price. That's um, right. Yeah, yep. I'd like to, uh, I did speak with her, and um, she's willing to serve again, so I'd like to reappoint um, Sharon Price for a second term. Great. She's second. another she's another great one. Thank you. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Next item is appointment of commissioners to no tourism advisory board. We got that. Appointment of commissioners to advisory boards. Um does everybody want to stay on the boards they're currently on? We've had no discussion amongst us, so I'm assuming that is the case. I'm 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 happy with the boards I'm on. Yeah. Okay. Me too. Move right. for approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. All right, number five. Well, I was thinking we should put him on some stuff while he's here. Or take him off some stuff. Everybody give up one. Right, right. <laughs> Paul, man, you're the man of the hour. All right, number five, ABC board. Uh, Have an appointment. Yep. Uh, I'd like to reappoint Vance Sadler to the ABC board. All right, I'll second that. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Uh, consent agenda. Any questions, comments, or concerns on the consent agenda this evening? I do have one question, Mr. Chairman. Yes, ma'am. Under the wild horse on page 181, mm -hmm. why have we reduced it to one member? Uh, from the 4 by 4 mm -hmm. um, it, uh, One was finding people to serve 
and two, uh, the, the the need isn't really there anymore. It was more about when they were designing this plan to have you know that larger input, but now that the plan is there, now it's, it's no substantive changes being done to the plan itself. So but my understanding is, I'm talking with the Crawwater Horse Fund Board, who uh, was the ones that actually suggested that that we just really didn't need it anymore because there's not really a lot going on with changes to that board and the, and the, and the, the plan itself. I was just wondering because it seems to take a little bit of the control out of the people who reside down there who are impacted by mm -hmm. the horses. Well, they, uh, yeah, it, it's at this point I don't see any major changes coming forward. I mean, we've got the yeah. county, the state, the federal government, everybody's, this is a management plan. It's not going to change much. So, okay, thank you. All right. In fact, the only changes are moving it basically from one, from two to one, uh -huh. correct? Both yep. the one on uh, one eighty-one and two seventeen. Both mm -hmm. of those changes, right? And then there's uh, you know item E, moving the chair. So we, uh, the the manager, the person assigned to this from the fund, that that's ch that seat was up. And amongst the, the board of the Corral Wild Horse Fund, we decided whoever is chairing the Corral Wild Horse Fund should be their voice at this any, any of these meetings. So that's why that change is there, so that the chairperson uh, is the one representing their interests, which makes a lot of sense, I guess. So there then are two people, two members of the Wild Horse Fund on this one member and the chair? One at large member. And that um, that is a resident of the four-wheel drive area. Well, okay, A says one member from the Corolla Wild Horse Fund, and um, C says one at-large member mm -hmm. who resides. It doesn't say that they have to be on the Wild Horse Fund. Right. And then the chairman of the Wild Horse Fund. So there's actually two members of the Wild Horse right. Fund. Okay. Right. All right. So this is the same number of members. It's just changing. The we drop we drop one 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 person for the at large. Um, right, but you members. added the chairman, right? No, that person was always there. Um, it was uh, I forget how it was worked before, but anyway, that that person. So in this case, her time was up on the board, and she was the best person to fill that seat. So the fund felt it was more important to have whoever is representing the fund as the, you know, much like I would speak for the board if it was a press item or something like that. But it looks like you they're taking, and I know there's no changes besides this, but it looks like they're taking residents and replacing them with people who are in the wild horse advisory. Well, board. the so the chair is a is a resident of Corova, and the one member is also a resident of the Fort. So everybody there is a resident of Currituck County, good. and right, right, right. So it's their interests are pretty much all aligned at this point. Okay. So, not not I don't think any we're not take, doing a disservice to the public by not having enough public people or residents of that area. Everyone that's that's participating is actually. Yeah. And yep. I guess if they're not pleased with it, we'll hear from them. Yeah, <laughs> and I'll be telling you guys about it So, because I'll hear about it. I'm the vice chair of that board. All right, I'll make All right. a motion for approval. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Selena, uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, thank you all. Let's see here. Um, I'm going to have to go into closed session. I'm going to move to go into closed session pursuant to GS 143-318.1185 to establish or instruct county staff concerning the position to be taken by the county in negotiating the price or other material terms of a contract for purchase of real property to be used for any governmental purpose. The property is owned by Amy D. Wells and Ronald K. Bennett and consists of 225 acres at the West Side Lane in Powell's Point, North Carolina. Crossroad number 011-200-0000-10000. No more zeros. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. All right. We are now in closed session. We'll take a few minutes for everybody to...